and the priest would have to go into the tabernacle every morning and make sure there was oil in the lamps so the lamps would burn bright all day and then every evening he would go in and make sure that the oil was in the lamps uh, so that the oil would burn all night long and then every morning he would do the same thing. God told them, he said, make sure that the fire is always burning in the lamp because as long as the fire is burning in the lamp, your enemies will not overtake you. Any time the priest let the fire go out in the lamp, the enemy always defeated the children of Israel. And it's a story to let us know. It's a picture, if you will. God paints a picture for us. It's a picture that says, if you keep the oil in the lamp, your enemies are not going to defeat you. As long as you keep the fire burning in your life, the enemy is not going to defeat you. Well, you say, well, what enemies are you talking about? You've got enemies of depression that's going to try to get a hold of you. And as long as the fire is lit, as long as you are hot for God, as long as you're serving God with your whole heart, and you're keeping, you're, you're tending to the oil, you're, you're keeping the fire burning, you're in the Word, you're in prayer, you're in church, you're tending to the fire. As long as you're tending to the fire, then your enemies are not going to defeat you. But I'm telling you, when you neglect the word, when you neglect coming to church, when you neglect prayer, when you neglect these things, the fire begins to gradually go out. You don't see it go out. You don't know how it goes out, but it goes out. And when the fire goes out, the smallest thing can defeat you. Any little marriage problem can defeat you. Any little bit of fear will get on you and overtake you. You cannot let the fire go out in your life if you are going to be victorious. Touch somebody and tell them, don't let the fire go out. <laughs> and then off to the right-hand side was the table of showbread. On the table, they would have the, the loaves of bread with the different tribes, and it shows how we need each other. It shows how we've got a fellowship together at the table, how we've got to join our faith together. And then past that, then was the altar of incense. And the altar of incense was where they would actually take the, 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 uh, a fire pan. We just read about it. They would take a fire pan from the, from the brazen altar, and they would take the coals from the brazen altar, and they would then, see remember the sacrifice was made at the brazen altar. That's where we repented of our sins at the brazen altar. And then they would take the fire pan to the altar of incense, which was just before the Holy of Holies, just before the presence of God. Now what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that before you can go into the presence of God, which is past the veil, which is where the Holy of Holies is, before you can get into the presence of God, you're going to have to repent of your sins. That's back at the altar of uh, uh, the brazen altar. And then you're going to have to take the coals from that to the altar of incense. When you take the coals of that to the altar of incense, that is when it says the altar of incense is when the, the fires from the brazen altar would then <coughs> the, <coughs> the fires from the brazen altar would light the incense which would then go up to God symbolic of the prayers rising unto the Lord. So we have the coals from the brazen altar, we've confessed our sins that are hot now. We take them to the altar of incense, and now it's the prayers going up before God that gets us into the presence of the Lord. You're, and there's several things you need to notice with this. One is you got to repent of your sins before you can get in the presence of the Lord. Next thing you got to do is take, take that, those hot prayers and send them up before the Lord. I say hot prayers, and I talked about it on Wednesday night. Because God does not want you to be lukewarm. In fact, Jesus said that the lukewarm church, God will spew out of his mouth. That's the, what's the lukewarm church? That's the church that only comes to church when they want to. That, that's the people that don't pay their tithes. The lukewarm church, they don't pray. They just, you know, they have other people praying for them. They, they really, you know, they, love, they say they love the Lord, but they're really not willing to make any sacrifices for the Lord. The lukewarm church. 
Jesus said, do not be lukewarm. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold rather than lukewarm. But the prayers go up, and now when the hot prayers go up, you can go into the presence of God, and it's in the presence of God that you get your needs met. If your needs are not being met, you've got to examine what I just talked about. Did you stop at that altar and confess your sins? Did you take the coals from that altar and begin to pray hot prayers up unto God and then go into the presence of the Lord? If the spiritual fire ever goes out in your life, you're going to be in trouble. That's when the enemy can overtake you. When your spiritual fire goes out, it's when you are weak and feel like quitting. We need to have a daily relation, excuse me, relationship with the Lord so we can keep the fires burning. We need to get full of the Holy Ghost so we can keep the fires burning. Are there any Holy Ghost people in this room today? But you see, I'm in church on Wednesday night because I need for God to mold me and reshape me. I get out of whack. I get messed up. I, all the stuff I got on Sunday leaks out by Wednesday. I need to get more of His Spirit in my life. But you see, when I come to church on Sunday and Wednesday, Monday night prayers tomorrow night, you need to be at Monday night prayer. I'm going to be there. If you've got any needs in your life, you need to come and be a part of Monday night prayer. Let us pray with you. But the bottom line to it is, you need to be in prayer. And if you don't really know how to pray as much as you should, you need to come and let us pray with you. But any, there's, there's still a great anointing on a corporate prayer when you come to Monday night prayer. But the bottom line is when I come to church all of this, all these different times during the week, what I'm saying is, God, I want you to make me what you want me to be. I want you to reshape me into the image you want me to be. And the priest would take the coals from the altar and put them in that altar of incense, and it's a place of prayer and a place of praise. Do you have a place of prayer at your home? I know for myself, I spend a lot of time in the car, and so my, my car is a place of prayer. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? This lets us know that our prayers need to come under the blood. Let me say it this way. Praying out of prayer manuals won't accomplish a whole lot. But praying when you're on fire will accomplish a lot. It's time to get full of the Holy Ghost and catch on fire. Tell somebody it's time to catch on fire. See, God says, I love you, but I won't do much until I see some fire. I love you, but I'm looking for somebody that'll get hot for me. Is anybody willing to get hot for the Lord in this house? Whoa, somebody shout, put another log on the fire. See, God's looking for somebody that'll send up some hot prayers. He's looking for somebody that'll send up the, the incense of smoke, which is nothing more than a picture of your prayers going up before the Lord. Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days because he needed a breakthrough. He prayed until he caught on fire. See, that's what praying's about, is praying until I catch on fire. It's praying until God moves on the inside of me. Tell somebody, you better catch on fire. The smoking incense shows us that God wants us to get hot for him. He doesn't want us coming to church cold and lifeless. He wants us to come to church smoking. 